the ones in green are the important provisions relating to Jammu and Kashmir. So the first column is the provision of Indian constitution. Second column is that which was made applicable to Jammu and Kashmir with what modification. And the last column is the supplementing provisions of Jammu and Kashmir constitution. It makes a very important reading because there are a few topics on which they had exercised their rights to have exceptions or modifications. Those are largely, those are the ones in green, territory, permanent residence, property rights, uh, fundamental duties have not been adopted there. Directive principles, they have what seems to be a more robust set of directive principles than we do in their constitution. Lok Sabha representation, services, consent for 352, 356, 358, then 367 and 368 and schedule 7. So these are the broadly the, the ones in green. This is 60 pages, this document. My, my associates spend a lot of time going provision by provision of all three. So make sure that it can be an exhaustive table that's set up. If you'll just come back to the note, Malad. Consultation and concurrence. Now, these phrases are used elsewhere in the constitution. And it can't be that for the purpose of 371D, where the impure notification has come, that you've treated it so casually. Because there is a particular purport and a direction when you seek consultation and you get concurrence. In the demonetization case, uh, Justice Gawai was part of the bench, um, and, and speaking through him, para 245 talks about the different types of consultation. These paras are set out. I'm not reading them. Second is the consultation which your lordships, in as far as appointment of judges in both SCORA as well as the special reference, you've read consultation in a particular way. So there is a meeting of minds. Now it may not be the 124 interpretation that you have to have, but you have to some basic meeting of minds as with the RBI in the demonetization case, as between the collegium and the government here, a certain meeting of minds. That meeting of minds doesn't mean your mind meeting your own mind. It has to mean some entity outside of yourself. You can't by this device of 356 say, what do you think about this? And then tell yourself, oh, it's a great idea. Somebody else has to do that for you. And that's what they have sidestepped. And they've done it in the constitution, which is why it's shocking. This is not some order by an executive of hearing. This is a constitutional amendment that you've effectively wrought about by way of this device. In Article 338B9, which deals with the OBCs and the commission required for that, your lordships in the Maratha reservation case said that the consultation there is mandatory. When you decide to add the Marathas to the lists, you should have consulted, you didn't consult. Now, all these are examples of where else in the constitution you have consultation and what it means. And you're weighed in, in constitution bench after constitution bench, up to nine judges repeatedly you're weighed in to say this is what it means, this is the meeting of minds. That's completely thrown overboard by what they have done. Importance of the provisor, I've mentioned these two judgments, Kehoto and Rajendra Shah. Colons, the indoor development constitution bench, links the proviso to the main provision. So there's no question about that. Recommendation, uh, we have a table on recommend, recommendation, etc., etc., which is table six, which shows the many places in the constitution where the word recommend is used and what its implications are. And it's necessary because it provides a kind of balance. A recommends to B. B can't set up A to recommend to B. A independently recommends to B. And that's also been thrown overboard. The non obstante clause in Article 370 is very, very important. This non obstante clause effectively trumps the other provisions in the Constitution which don't have non obstante clauses. 3, 356, 367 all don't have non obstante clauses. Now, why does 370 say notwithstanding anything in this Constitution? It is so that in a situation where any of these other provisions, could be in conflict, 370 is the one that will prevail. Which is why we have set out what those provisions are. The first bullet point talks about to Article 3, that proviso, which is in the... If I can show in para 8 on page 15, just... 
how article 367 366 was misused misused in madhav rao sindhya 367 is being misused here just see 367 you please note falls in part 19 malo so it's not covered by 368 2 proviso so everything in 368 2 proviso which needs half the states to give its consent they can do by way of 367 just say for each of these articles this provision will read thus examples the word person in article 21 can be interpreted to mean person accused of an offense in 367 i'll put an interpretation clause which says person in article 21 will mean person accused of an offense so all other rights that your lordships have read in into article 21 is out of the window because it's only person accused of an offense why co-location it's right next to article 20 it's 21 so it's similar kind of people that's justification they could give if we allow this to happen using 367 the phrase the legislatures of not less than one half of the states in the second proviso to 368 could be read as the Rajya Sabha or the law minister you could say that we have followed the right procedure we have followed a procedure of doing it by way of 367 well, giving all these ideas mr uh, which is why which is why please take a sledgehammer to this 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 invidious method of trying to uh, support the constitution and the reason why i say this is because justice hidayatullah in madhav rao sindhya says we must take extreme examples to test what they are doing only when you take extreme examples he talks about the maharaja of sindh and says suppose the maharaja of sindh is now said to be the maharaj uh, said to be the nizam of hyderabad of course the president would never do anything like that but we must take extreme examples for this purpose which is why i'm forced to take these extreme examples to show that if they're allowed to do this heaven knows what they'll do next now, I, I, I won't read the next bullet point for many reasons. Your Lordship may read it on your own. Well, uh, if your Lordships come to page 17, frauds on the constitution, ordinances, three judgments on that, Vadva, A.K. Roy, and Krishna Kumar Singh, Malod's uh, Justice uh, Chandrachud's own judgment. In fact, A.K. Roy is the other Mr. Justice Chandrachud's judgment. Uh, we have put both those extracts there so your Lordships can see. In fact, both your lordships have spoken in very similar terms about how the constituent assembly held forth as it were an assurance to the people that an extraordinary power shall not be used in order to perpetuate a fraud on the constitution which is conceived with so much faith and vision that assurance must in all events be made good your lordships have said an edifice of rights and obligations cannot be built in a constitutional order on acts which amount to fraud on power this will be destructive of the rule of law Similarly, in precedence rule, how abusers are done, SR Bomai's paragraphs, Rameshwar Prasad, Privy Purses, I'll read separately in a few minutes. Possible consequences of such abuses, if you see point five at page 19, there's a separate table on this where we have substituted legislature of the state with parliament everywhere in the constitution. So you can see how absurd it becomes because by using powers under 356, can you do things which are irreversible and destructive? The idea of 356, much like 123, is a stopgap. It's in between. So that eventually, parliament or the government will take a call on it. It is not that you can do something completely irreversible and say, sorry, I had the power to do it. You didn't. Votes on accounts, GST, procedure of legislatures, panchayats, municipalities, even 246 where list two is with the state legislature, parliament can say state legislature is parliament and then start making laws on its own. Surely that was not what is envisaged. Federalism and article three has been exhaustively covered by Mr. C. U. Singh. I've just put some extracts of both the GNCTD cases, particularly to show that uh, the, the GNCTD two is one that is, uh, I think, very, very clear on uh, the, the unique position. And, uh, one small thing at point two, page 22. Second point, 12 reorganization acts have been enacted. We have given that list, that's table four. This is 2B, Malods, bottom of page 22. 12 reorganization acts enacted till date show that a state has never been annulled. The first one is this, where by way of this Kashmir reorganization act, entry 15 has been deleted. Everything has been renumbered and moved up one. It's never happened before. A, all that's happened is union territories have moved into the state list. That's all. You never had a situation where the converse has happened. This is the first. 
Well, it's Mangal Singh, Mr. Singh referred to it. Mangal Singh effectively said that states must have legislature, executive, judiciary, etc., and all of these must be in existence. By going ahead, not following the procedure with reference to legislative council, we've heard that point already. So I'm not ref referring to that again. 